and gentlemen, welcome back to another Wyatt's World Top 10 list and welcome back to the top 10 most relatable things I experience in my life on a pretty consistent basis. Now this was a requested video and I also thought it was a great idea because even though everybody is, you know, different, we're also all human and we experience the same annoying things and sometimes it's just very, very warming to hear that other people also go through it. So hopefully some of you guys can find some laugh and comfort in this. Anyway, real quick before we start, don't forget to use code Wyatt's World on G Fuel or Prize Picks, where you can save yourself a discount on any G Fuel products or match up to $100 of your first deposit. Also, remember to take advantage of the Caitlin Clark Free Square. That's tonight. All she needs is one point. And like I said, you can combine it with other sports, so MLB, NBA, whatever. But that is all I got. Let's get into the top 10 most relatable things. All right, so first thing on this list is to anybody who deals with a dog on a consistent basis, but it's me pretending not to pay any attention to my dog so he will poop. Anybody else do that? Because I have to do it about every single day and it always works. I swear to you, it does. Like if I'm just not looking at my dog and I'm just acting like I'm looking at the sky or something, even though I really am paying attention to him, he will go to the bathroom. But if we're just walking and I'm like actively, you know, looking at my dog or looking ahead, he won't poop. Like, I don't know sometimes I feel dumb like it's some crazy superstition, but when it has a 100% success rate, I'm gonna continue to do it. Next relatable thing I have, I know a lot of people also do, and it doesn't make any sense, but it's when we turn down the music in the car to see better. Yeah, if it's ever raining, snowing, if I'm in an unfamiliar city where I don't know where I'm going, if the fog is bad, it's dark, whatever, I turn down the music as if I can then see better. Does it help you concentrate? Sure, I believe that. But in no way, shape, or form is my vision any better without noise, even though I always turn down the music when I'm unfamiliar with where I'm going or if I can't see. All right, next relatable thing I have is backing out of a purchase. Now this one can be good and this one can be bad and I don't know if everyone deals with this, but I do know some people do. And I'm talking self-entertainment purchases. You wanna go get a box of cards, you wanna get a video game, a movie, a new TV, a phone, whatever it is, you go to bed and wake up with that idea set in your mind, hey, I'm going to buy this thing. Then you'll go to school or you'll go to work, you'll you know have your entire day still thinking, hey, when I'm done, I'm gonna celebrate by treating myself, you will then drive all the way to the store, go to the shelf, pick up the product, look at it, and then go and put it back. Does anyone else do that? I do that weekly still. I've done it ever since I got a job and I still do it today. Well, I shouldn't say ever since I got a job. I used to blow every cent I had, but for the last like six to seven years. What's funny about it is if I'm spending money on other people, oh, oh yeah, sure. I don't give a fuck. But if I'm spending money on myself, no, no can do. Anyone else? Next thing I got is the mental battle people go through when they finally cave in and order DoorDash. So we all know DoorDash is a huge scam and I don't think anybody really likes to order from DoorDash. But every once in a while, the convenience of it will get the best of us. We'll have nothing in the house we don't wanna leave and we will cave in and do it. But if you're like me, it's always a process. It's always opening the app, going to, let's say Chipotle, making your $9 burrito bowl, then seeing it's gonna be a $24 burrito bowl after all the fees and exiting the app. Then you'll sit there and be pissed off saying fuck that shit for an hour straight and then you'll realize you're gonna do nothing about it. So you pick up your phone and finally just say, screw it, I'm never gonna think about this again and you buy it. Anybody else not go through that exact same process? Like I don't wanna pay three times the retail price of what I'm getting, but I also don't wanna go to a store. I sure as hell am not gonna drive to whatever restaurant it is. So it's really just one option left and that's to cave in. All right, next thing we got is something I haven't done in a while because I don't play fantasy football, but back when I did play fantasy football, I used to never ever check on how my team was doing because I felt like it was bad luck and it would just cause them to stall. I don't know. It just felt like the less I opened the app, the better my team would always do. So I would sit there for an entire Sunday. I would always check my players' individual scores on like the ESPN app and stuff, but I just would not open the fantasy app. I guess I kind of can still relate with it with prize picks. I don't ever check my prize picks because I feel like it's just bad luck. I mean, this is completely superstitious, but I also have a hard time believing I'm the only only guy who is like this. Is anybody else? 
All right, next relatable thing we have is uh, kind of involving me being a fat ass, but if I ever get something that I plan to eat in parts, we'll say, you know, half of something, so half a candy bar, half a Ben and Jerry's, half a sandwich, half of a Chipotle bowl, you know, anything like that. If I eat 51% of the bowl and see that there's less left for the second time, I just eat the whole thing at once. I just feel like I'll be cheating myself on the second round. Like even if it's just one grain of rice off of that half of the Chipotle bowl, might as well just eat the whole second half. If I get to halfway through my Ben and Jerry and I get one extra spoonful, eh, might as well just eat the entire second half because next time I'm not gonna get as much. If I ever save something for a second serving, I need there to be just as much the second time as there is the first. All right, next relatable thing I have is staring at the ATM screen and holding up the line until it is completely reset after your transaction to make sure you don't get hacked. If I'm in a gas station, at a bar, in a drive through ATM, it doesn't matter what it is. If I use an ATM and put my card in it, doesn't matter if there's a million people behind me, I will sit and stare at that fucking screen until it completely resets and says, welcome, please insert card. I know I hit no more transactions. I know I have my card back in my my hand. I know the screen says, thank you, come again, but I ain't leaving until you reset. Next thing I've got, I am very confident every single person has done, and that is making your own tape measure. You know, needing to measure something and not having a tape measure, so you do one of these. And then it never ever ends up actually being as snug as you would think because you can't hold your arms completely still no matter how hard you try. I mean, I'll do that shit in my basement when there's a tape measure five steps upstairs. I'm just like, no, I'm not gonna do it, man. I can just do it right here. And then I end up going to get the tape measure because I fuck it up. Next relatable thing I have is when you have just the most random worries and panic attacks right as you're about to go to bed. Like I'm talking one of these. Where's my passport? I haven't seen that thing in like six years. Where is my passport? You won't even be traveling anywhere. It'll just hit you. Social security card, that's another big one. Where's my social security card? That'll just hit me at like 11.30 at night when I'm laying in bed. Like just the most random out of pocket shit. Where does it come from? Like, I don't know. I won't be thinking about anything to do with it. I'll be sleeping. And then you'll sit there and panic for like 10 minutes and then you'll fall asleep and then wake up and not think about it again. Anybody else, please? And the last thing on the list I think is pretty darn relatable too, and it's showing how creative we can all be when we need to get the plastic wrap off of a box. Now obviously this is a card box for example, but no matter what you get, as long as it's wrapped in plastic, oftentimes the plastic can be really hard, like you can't rip it, there's no point of tear on it. You don't have a scissors or anything sharp nearby, so you find whatever you can to puncture it. Bro, I've used my teeth before, taken a headphone jack and punctured it, I've used a key. I have quite literally burned plastic before. I've used a spoon, pens, pencils. Now at one point I even used a USB jack. Anybody else or do you guys just go upstairs like normal people and actually grab a knife? Anyway guys, that is gonna be all for 10 things that at least I think are extremely relatable with the general population of the United States slash world. If you guys did like this video, you already know what to do to show support and make sure to put some things in the comments that I left out of this video that you guys think are very relatable. Anyway, as always, I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day. I'll try and get some WWE content back on this channel soon. Regardless though, take it easy. I will see you in the next upload.